Okay. Um, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I don't have too many people here at the moment. Um, for the ones online, let me know if if the sound sounds okay. Uh, maybe give me a thumbs up or something to check that, uh, that the microphone's doing well here today. Um, real quickly, once more. Test, test, test. I think it's set. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so today might be a relatively short session. Uh, it's mostly to answer questions about the assignment two, if anybody has them. Um, so I thought I'd go over uh, one or two things um, that I haven't talked a whole lot about or emphasized yet. Um, this point, um, hopefully everybody has their dev box up. Everybody I know of, except for maybe one, we've gotten their issues resolved, or at least we got them an alternative set up. So um, if you're watching this after the fact, um, you don't have your dev box up, you need to let me know. Because uh, yeah, the first assignment is due, uh, the first program assignment is due um, tomorrow. Um, so as a reminder, I do have a 5 p.m. deadline on those. So um, uh, because I'm, I'm kind of like I did for the written assignment, I'm going to try and at least do a, a sanity check at 5 p.m. To, to see that everybody submitted the right thing, um, the right submission file. Uh, maybe even if I get a chance to try and check whether it's compiling uh, and running the test. So. Um, yeah, let, me, let me bring up the um, assignment two. Let's talk some more about that. So, um, as usual, I mean, just for practice, I'll go ahead and uh, show starting this back up your dev box from a terminal. Um, I've got mine in the boxes directory. Um, so yours probably is in repos if you followed the instructions. Um, and it's DSA 430 OS Sims. Let's bring it up. Uh, some things to check for on this that your port 88 is being forwarded. And although if that's not being forwarded, um, you'll probably have problems uh, connecting up the Visual Studio Code server uh, when you try and bring it up in your browser. Chrome for, for this, um, bring up home browser. Um, so, oh, um, I did some updates, so you, oh, it's gonna didn't normally have to reinstall the guest editions, uh, but I just updated my virtual box here, so I think it's doing some stuff that you would normally see on a regular startup here. So um, while I'm waiting for that to boot up, let me let me also get the instructions again for assignment one. So, so again, you can read the PDF on these. Um, so since the folders are being shared, you should be able to also see on your host system all your assignments um, and the files that you build and things. So this will be important for uploading the um, um, submission file here, uh, which I'm going to show. I, I, I think I, I may have mentioned it in passing before, but I want to um, kind of demonstrate then uh, submitting the work here for the assignment, make sure everybody knows how to do that. Um, anyway, we can open up the assignment description here. All right, there, I'm, I'm running finally. So normally you won't get this stuff, but um, you should also check that the guest editions do look okay and that your folders are being shared. So, um, if your folders aren't being shared, um, what you'll get, let me go ahead and check here that we can get in. So we'll go to the 127 home address, port 8080. 
Um, and you should see your Visual Studio Code server here. So, um, you'll need to open the assignment. If your folders aren't being synced, you probably won't see the, um, um, the files here under the sync assignment. So, um, so, so yeah, you should find your assignment one um, and the other assignments here. Um, and if we want to work on assignment one, you need to select assignment one. So. So last time um, I talked some more about assignment one, about the tasks. I don't know if anybody has any questions. Um, I wasn't really planning on going over the, um, the tasks anymore, uh, describing those unless um, somebody wants to ask about them. So, you know, we, we, uh, a week ago, we kind of got started with the initialized memory. Um, all these videos are up for these help sessions. If you're, you know, it's, it's, it's probably a little bit late to be starting on the assignment now. I know a couple of people aren't starting until now because of the emails that I'm getting about stuff. Um, these assignments, most students, a typical student needs to spend a couple of evenings on these. So, um, so I encourage you to start at least, you know, the, the week on Monday when it's due, if not before, and, and I'll probably usually start talking about these like the week before. So, um, yeah, and then last time I, I, I kind of went through translate address, peek and poke. I went through quickly on the execute, uh, the, the fetch and the execute, and then the execute load store and things. I don't know if anybody has questions about those, but um, um, let me know if you do. Um, oh, um, I did have so, somebody, there are some people working on it, so I did have somebody have a question. Um, um, so I wanted to mention this. If, if you run the tests, and, um, and if all your unit tests are passing, it'll also run what are known as the system tests here. Um, let me show you those. Um, I'm gonna open, close this back up and open up my solution. Uh, let me check that this is building here. Let's do a clean control shift one, control shift two to build everything. And then, so if you're near the end of the assignment, um, if you do control shift three, it'll only run the unit tests. Um, so um, I ought to check that because I'd kind of like to have it run the unit tests and the system tests as well. So when you do a make, when, when you get and ready to submit the assignment, um, it will run both the unit tests and the system tests. So, so even if you have the unit test passing, some people found that um, um, you could have a problem with the system tests uh, running. Um, you can run the system test by hand. Um, I guess you have to open up a terminal. Um, so if you do a make tests in your assignment one directory, um, it'll run the unit tests and the system tests, right? So that's one way to check these. Uh, you can run these by hand by just doing dot slash and then run the system test. Uh, all the make test is doing is running the dot slash test, which is the set of the unit tests, and that's running the dot slash run system test, which runs the system test. So, um, So you can easily have a few of these system tests not passing. Let me show you an example of what that looks like once you get to the end here. Um, so let's say,
um, I think the, the, the most likely place to happen is if you don't have the, the um, error message exactly correct um, as, or well, exactly as expected um, in certain places. Uh, so, so these system tests, uh, and I'm gonna show these here. Um, they're basically just running your code and doing a, an exact diff to, com to compare it to some expected output. And if there's any difference, um, it flags that as, as failing um, the system level test. So, um, so for example, if I just change this message um, um, in translate address, I think this is the main one that uh, you might be hitting. Uh, so if I change that and rebuild, run the test, um, and yeah, I think specifically you'll see three and four um, will, will fail um, if this this message isn't the uh, exact kind of um, of what it's expecting here. I don't know if I need to make that any bigger or not. A little bit bigger. So let me just show you what these are doing here real quickly. So, uh, I mean, also st I showed this last time. I mean, you can run these simulations by hand once you've got them uh, built. So um, these are meant to be uh, run from the command line. So when you um, build your assignment, um, it, it builds two executables. It builds the test executable for doing the testing, but it builds the simulation, which is the real purpose of all these. Um, and um, and I showed this last time, so you, so you can run. Um, so let's let's run the simulation for program three here. So um, it takes two command line arguments, the number of cycles, which I think we usually the system test we just test for a maximum of hundred fetch execute cycles, um, and then we give the name of the input file. So in this case, all the input files are in the sim files directory. So we can specify some file in the sim files directory. Um, so in particular, I want to try running the program free.sim. So if you look in the sim files, there's two files. Um, there, there's the sim file, which is the input, and then there's the result, which is what's being which is what the output is being compared to for these system tests. So we can run program um, 3.sim, simulate it. Um, and you'll see see the output. Uh, and notice at the very last thing here, um, because basically um, in this code, I was checking an error condition. Um, so there was a, um, there was a uh, reference on instruction at, at address 103 in this program, I was trying to do a load from memory address 200. But, but the valid memory addresses uh, were from 100 to like 199. So that was beyond the simulated memory that we had for this program. So instead of trying to do that fetch, um, it should have been um, um, giving you an error message, right? And it should be hitting that from the translate address, checking the bounds that are, are legal for all memory addresses here. So um, if you look at the program three result and, and you compare your output, um, you'll see that that line differs if, if, if you're failing the, uh, the, the system test here. So for example, um, you can op open up program 03 sim uh, result um, and, and look down here, right? So it, it might not be, you know, It'll be a little bit um, tough to scroll through here and check every line by line, especially for future assignments. So if you want to, um, you can form the diff. So this is actually what the um, uh, the system tests are doing. So it's just doing a diff between your output. So we could do something like, let's say, capture the output of running the program. So this is, this is a little bit of command line stuff. So we're going to use a right arrow to send the output um, uh, instead of sending this to the terminal, I'll capture it. We'll call it um, program 03. Dot, um, um, my results or something like that. 
So, oh, um, and in this case, uh, we do have to add a little something because the uh, error message is sent to standard error instead of standard output. So, this is another little command line, command line thing. So, by saying two out ampersand one, we um, also redirect the standard error to go to the standard output stream as well. So, um, we should so um I thought that needed to be there. Does that have to be at the end? There we go. So I guess I guess the order of where that goes matters, so it has to be the last thing on there. Um, maybe I'll post a message about this. So, because this is useful, um, maybe not so much for this assignment. So, I probably won't take off any points if, if you've got the uh, this particular problem where the system tests aren't passing. But it would be good to understand this because later on, um, you'll need to, to do stuff to get the system test to pass once you have the unit test passing, right? So, um, if you capture that output, you can just do a diff between. results from your running your program versus the, the expected results in the um, sim files. So this will more directly um, allow you to see the difference. So in this case, it's, it's also the sense it's um, um, a little bit abbreviated, but it's saying that there's a difference between uh, on line 131 of the two files uh, and the difference. So the left arrow is the, the line in the first file on the diff, which was my output, my result. And then the right one here is the line 131 um, on the second file that we're doing the diff here, right? So, uh, so this is easier to see. So the only difference is that the error message is slightly different there, right? That, that would help you kind of um, um, focus in on what it is, why the system test is failing. So, um, why it is that this um, particular system test is failing? If if you do these steps that I just just showed, so so run it by hand um, and then do a diff between what your output is is generating and um, what the system test you're expecting. Right, and you'll be able to directly see which line or which lines. Are differing, right? So for, for future assignments, you know, it might not be so simple that it's an error message. So it might be that um, um, you're not, um, uh, you've got a bug somewhere um, that needs further uh, fixing. So, you know, you haven't implemented something completely. Um, so in this case, if you are seeing that, if, if you just get your um, output message, and I think it might only be the translate address that needs to be fixed because that's the only one that we were testing in the system tests, even though there's a couple, couple of other um, exception messages that you had to write here. Um, but um, this exactly match that um, exception message um, when you run your system tests. Um, they should all pass if your if your output is exactly what is being expected here in these result files. So. Um, and then that brings me. I mean, the final thing is um, I might have mentioned it briefly in passing, but I did want to show at least once an example of. Um, what you need to do to submit the assignment when you're done, you know, so hopefully everybody can get to this point. So even if you don't have um, everything passing the unit test and the system test, you should submit your best effort by the deadline. Okay, you can continue working on it after the deadline. And I might still look at things that are past the deadline, but you know, give me what you have by the, the deadlines for these programming assignments, same for the written assignments as well. Um, but um, although 
I can't give them a lot if any points for a submission that's not at least compiling and running the test. So, you know, one of the things that I'm trying to teach that, that I want people to learn is to do incremental development. So you always need to keep your program in a compilable state so it can compile and at least run the test. So, so it might not be passing the, um, the system tests, but, um, um, but, but it should be able to run them, right? So, you know, uh, if, if your program isn't even compiling, Um, and you submit that, I mean, um, I can't, the, I mean, the, the basic reason is, is that um, in order for me to actually run the test and get a good idea of how well, you know, you did on the task and how well you implemented things, I would actually have to first fix the bug, the, the compilation issue, right? Um, and uh, by me by me doing that, I, I might be fixing other, you know, issues that you have. So, you know, you really have to be, um, uh, have your code compiling before you do the make submission, compiling and, and at least running the test. Doesn't have to be passing the tests to get some points. In fact, as long as you're submitting something that looked like you made a valid attempt to get started, um, and it's compiling and running, you'll probably get, you know, at least 50 to 60% of the points on the assignment and everybody should be able to do that because you're given the the code in a compilable state when 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 you start the assignment so all you have to do to get you know half the credit is have your dev box working um and complete the first task which i often get you started on and submit that and and, and you get something um for for at least demonstrating that you can you know you've got your development environment up um and um, you're able to add a little bit, get started and work on things, and you can keep your code in a compilable and runnable state. Um, let's fix that. So it's always a good idea before you're getting ready to submit your work to do a make clean. Um, so that will guarantee that I'm rebuilding everything from scratch. So sometimes it is possible for things to be a little bit hidden if there's some issues, uh, if you're just uh, incrementally rebuilding. Um, so if you do a clean before your final, uh, getting ready to submit something and then do a make. And if it's building then and running the tests, um, then you're ready. To um, submit something, so um, that's a good point that you can do the submission. Okay, so to do this, um, to submit your work for the assignments, um, you do have to do this from a terminal. So um, you will have to go, you know, open up a terminal. If you've got the folder open for assignment one, it should open up the terminal in your assignment one directory which is where you want to be to um, um, make these submissions. And, and then there's another target uh, that you need to run to make the submission file uh, for the assignments, make submit. Um, so if you do a, do a make help, you can see all the targets that are available for the build system. Um, so make submit, what it does, um, and, and you have to submit this file because we've got some auto grading uh, stuff set up. So you have to submit this, this uh, assignment one tar.gzip file that's created here. Um, the, the, the make submit uh, runs it through the code style checker and formatter to make certain that your code conforms to the class style guidelines. Um, and then it, um, um, it runs this tar command, but you shouldn't do this by hand because uh, the auto grader exactly expects this set of files in your submission file. Um, so um, um, the result is this file called um, um, assignment1.tar.gz, right? So, so you should see that after you do the make submit, um, for example, in your uh, file explorer on Visual Studio Code. Uh, and more importantly, though, so this is, this is the main reason in this class why you need to make certain that your um, 
shared folders are correctly being mounted between your dev box and your host system because in order to submit the file, you need to be able to, to get it out of your dev box. And the easiest way to do that is to have the, the shared folder set up. So if you go to your host system um, and go to your file browser, however you normally file bro browse files in your file system, then go to that assignment. In this case, it was my assignment one solution. Again, you should see, you know, you should have available the um, um, that tar.gzip file, which I call the submission file or, or the submission packet for the assignment, right? Don't rename this. So if you're working, uh, I want to talk a little bit about groups, working as groups for this class too. So if you're working as a group, uh, you all should be submitting the same code. Um, so um, a common, I mean, you know, I, I would prefer that everybody that's working on the group is actually compiling themselves and making their own submission packet themselves. But I understand. So sometimes people uh, like email this to each other. So be careful though, that, that if you're like copying this file around, so like when you download it or from email or something uh, like on some systems like Windows, um, if, it ha if you already have a file with that same name, it will append things like a, a, a one on there. You know, so it'll change the name. So, so be careful that, that, that the name is exactly assignment1.tar.gz so that it will actually be able to be opened up and run by the grading, uh, the, the auto grading uh, system. Um, because basically the, auto, the, the grading system extracts everything and then it runs the, uh, the, the, the make all, um, so it, it runs those exact same targets in the exact same environment that you, that you have set up on your dev box. So, so it's expecting a file with exactly this name so it can extract it, do a build, uh, and then run the tests. Um, and, and then from that, um, that's where I kind of look at it. Um, so I can see where you were on the test and give further feedback uh, from the thing. So, you know, once you've done the make submit, um, you can um, go to DTOL, go to the assignments, um, the assignment one, I probably shouldn't be showing this here. So some, some people, um, it's like they've already submitted something for assignment one, but, but yeah, go to the assignment one. And, and as a student, then there should be an option to uh, submit your assignment or and, and attach a file. And, and you know, you want to attach that assignment one.tar.gz file, um, submit it here. So. Um, let me think. So what else? So um, I think that was all that I was planning on covering here. So I'm probably gonna, you know, um, leave it open for questions. Hopefully I started recording on this here. Yeah. Um, so let's see if anybody has any questions here. Um, I'll probably stop the recording here, but I'll leave the Zoom session open in case uh, anybody that's remote wants to uh, ask a question if they're working on the assignment too or whatever other issues they might be having. Um, so yeah, so let me go ahead and start stop the recording for the session then for today here.